It's an old Russian saying that a fox knows many things. A hedgehog knows only one thing, but it knows it really well. And as meditators, we have to learn how to be like hedgehogs. There are lots of things we know in the world. Our eyes pick up all kinds of forms. Our ear hears all kinds of sounds. All the way down through the senses, we pick up an awful lot of information in the course of the day. But we have to have a very clear sense of what's really important and what's not, what to focus on and what to let go. And the simple fact that the, the path centers on right concentration. should give us an important message. There are a very limited number of things that we really have to focus on, that we really can benefit from developing. And there are a lot of things we have to let go. If you're trying to take care of everything in life, straighten out everything, the job never gets done. It's like that game of whack-a-mole. You hit one mole as it comes out of the hole, well, another mole comes out of another hole, and then another one out of another hole. And there's no end to them. The Ajans talk about this quite a lot. They said there's only one job in the world that you can really come to the end of, and that's the job of straightening out your own mind, gaining victory over your own mind. Because a lot of the straightening out that we like to do is basically gaining victory over other people, over other situations, exerting our will, exerting our control. And yet how long can that control last? And a lot of times in exerting our control, we get a lot of bad karma, which comes back to bite us later on. There's that case of Lai, the cat we had years back here at the monastery. For us many years, it ruled the roost over there in the guest house. And then as it got old and weak, then the cats that it had been lording it over turned on it. It had a miserable old age. And so you realize that that kind of victory doesn't really accomplish anything and causes a lot of trouble because it can turn around and turn into defeat. But the victory over our defilements, once you've really won it, doesn't harm anybody. Nobody's going to mind the fact that you have less greed, less aversion, less delusion. And that's a job that really can come to an end. This is one of the reasons I think they they talked about the Bartamis of the Buddha. There's lots of disagreement on what the word Bartami comes from. But one of the possibilities is that the Buddha focused on what's of foremost importance in life, i.e. developing qualities of the mind. When you make that your goal, then you can let the other issues of life go by. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't do things or help with things outside with other people, but you realize that you can exert only so much control over things outside. The important thing is that you develop good qualities of the mind while you're trying to help outside. So even if it turns out the help simply can't help the other person because of karma or because of changes in society, there's a lot that we really can't control. But what you can control is the attitude that you bring towards whatever task you're doing. And you give that top priority. So for right now, we're working on concentration. So give this your top priority. Anything else that comes up in the mind right now, just let go. Whatever stories come up about what this person or that person did, or what you're going to have to do tomorrow, or what you did yesterday or today, those go by the wayside. 
they don't have the importance of learning how to train the mind. So it's clear, focused, solid here in the present moment. You have to keep this strong sense of priorities in line if you want to develop the Barnabas, if you want to develop the perfections. Because otherwise they turn into secondaries. They're not primaries anymore. They're secondaries or tertiaries. Then they get sloughed off and they got forgotten. So you really have to make the determination. This is why determination is one of the Barnabas. And why the Buddha's four qualities of determination cover all the Barnamis. You've got to make up your mind. This is what you want. And you focus everything on this. It's like playing chess. You have to be willing to lose some of your pawns. And sometimes your knights and sometimes your bishops. But as long as you get checkmate, that's what matters. And it's the same with the practice. They're going to, it's going to have to be sacrifice. The things you have to give up. Certain comforts, certain pleasures. Even certain ideals or ideas that you've held very, very dearly. You realize that the ideal of the practice has to come first. Sometimes you hear people scoffing at the idea of ideals in general as being something childish and immature, but that's not the case. Look at the example of the Buddha himself. All the things that he sacrificed for the sake of attaining the deathless. And that's amazing when you think about it. Here he had attained the state of neither perception or non-perception, very high, refined states of concentration, which many people in those days thought was the ultimate. And it wasn't good enough for him. He wanted something better when he lived in the palace. became dissatisfied with the pleasures of the palace. Everyone said, this is as good as it gets. And he said, well, it must, there must be something better. And even if there's not, it's a dignified way to live your life is to die in the attempt, to find something better. Not just give in, not just give up, say, well, that's just the way it is, and leave it at that. There's something really good, and fortunately he found it. He stuck with his determination all the way to the point where he did yield the deathless. So now the path is there. We have the reports that someone has found it and gone all the way. Other people have followed his way, reached the path, reached the goal. So it's now up to us to decide whether that's an important fact of life, something that we want to accept as a challenge or just pretend didn't happen. And make sure we don't get waylaid, we don't get sidetracked. And this is how the perfections become perfect. This is how they take top priority. As we follow through with that determination, there are four qualities that the Buddha lists as going together with the determination. First is discernment, learning to see what's important, learning to see clearly what has to be done to get to what's important, understanding the path, what has to be developed, what has to be abandoned, and learning to make distinctions. A while back I was leading a course on the perfections, and someone noticed you look at the list of ten perfections and it's a pretty generic list of virtues. You go into any culture, any religious tradition, and they'll all say that these are good things to develop. What makes them particularly Buddhist, though, is the element of discernment that's brought to each of them. Not just dealing in vague generalities or vague abstractions like the perfection of goodwill. You have to have goodwill for everyone, but that doesn't mean that you are friends with everyone. You 
There's some people who are worth being friend with, friends with, and other people, if you hang around with them or if you spend time associating with them, are actually going to lead you down. So in cases like that, you have to pull back a little bit. And the same with equanimity and patience. There are some things that you're equanimous about and other things that you can't just let, let go, that you really have to work on. Some things that you're patient with, some things you tolerate, difficult physical situations, the heat when it's hot, the cold when it's cold, pain when you're ill. But unskillful thoughts in the mind, unskillful qualities in the mind, you're not patient with them. You try to get rid of them, as the Buddha said, as if they were a fire burning your head. You put them out of this as much energy and mindfulness and relentlessness as you can. So it's important as you try to work on the perfections that you use your discernment to realize exactly what is a perfection and where do you have to make distinctions. Once you've seen the distinctions, then the next quality is truthfulness. This means not only telling the truth, but also being true to what needs to be done. If you see you need to work more on your meditation, you work more on your meditation. And while you're working on it, you really focus on what you're doing, noticing what works, noticing what doesn't work, like the cook who notices what his master likes and doesn't like, doesn't wait to be told, just notices when the master eats a certain curry or ignores another one, reading that as a message. It's the same with the mind. Their mind is giving off messages as to what's working and what's not. You've got to learn how to read those. Pay full attention. Next quality is relinquishment. Realizing that some things you've got to let go. Like all those outside victories, having to straighten out this person, deal with that person. Realizing that some things that are just not worth the effort. And if they get in the way of your practice here, you've got to put them aside. Learn how to sidestep issues. Like that story of the Chinese martial arts master. His students were going to have a demonstration that day in a pavilion off in the forest. So on the road to the pavilion, there was a donkey, a well-known donkey, known for being really nasty and mean, kicking anybody who came anywhere near it. And so the students who were coming before the master decided they'd try some of their martial arts skills before they got to the pavilion. So one student went up with one stance to deal with the donkey, and the donkey kicked him across the road. Second student came up, said, "That's you fool, that's now it's done. He tried another stance. Well, the donkey kicked him across the road as well. This kept on until none of the students had been able to deal with the donkey at all. They all got kicked across the road. So they went to hide behind the bushes on the side of the road to see that when the master came, how he would handle the donkey. Well, the master came, he saw the donkey, and he walked way around, realizing there's some battles that are just not worth fighting. Even if you win, it's not really a victory. So those are the things you've got to put aside, let go of. Focus on what really is important. And then the final quality, which is calm, keeping the mind calm through all of this. When you find that little voice that says, well, how can they get away with that? You say, calm down. It's outrageous what they did. Calm down. Why is this? Why? Calm down. Just keep keeping yourself calm. This is one of the reasons why it's important that you develop good, strong powers of concentration. So you can maintain that sense of calm regardless. When it seems like the path is getting awfully long, you calm down. You just keep at it. The path has never been made shorter by getting upset about it. It's made shorter by taking the next step and then the next step. And so you have to be calm enough to take that step, focus on that step. All too often we 
follow a path and the mind has run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth many, many times. Thinking about where the end of the path is, coming back to where you are, going back to the end of the path where you are as you're walking along. No wonder it gets tired. You walk down the path once, but the mind has been back and forth on the path a hundred times, making it longer than it has to be. So when you find yourself getting worked up about issues, remember, calm down. Because getting worked up is not a factor of the path. It's not one of the baramis. It's not one of the perfections. Keep your determination focused on things that are really important. It doesn't matter how many pawns you lose as long as you reach checkmate. Even this body of ours is someday we're going to have to lose it, put it aside. So what really matters is the shape of your mind. So these factors of determination are important to keep in mind, because they put the perfections where they are, at top priority. These qualities of mind that are your true treasure. Make sure they have top priority. And if anything gets in the way of that top priority, just put it aside. That's the kind of focus you need.